Um, in a little bit, I'm going to pull up the passage that we're going to focus on. But I just want you to know that it is not on accident that you would happen on this video. It is not on accident that you would spend this time. It is intentional and it's God's purpose for every single one of us, including myself, by the way. This is something that God is working in me and God is working in you. Amen. Do you believe that? So we're going to go to Numbers chapter 6 and we're going to read it together um, in a little bit. But I just want to give you that opportunity to, to get there. To get there with your with your Bible. Before we get to Numbers chapter 6, I want you to consider what it is that God is speaking to you every day. Because I think we forget that God could be saying something to us right now. That God could be saying some to, something to us at our workplace. That God could be saying something to us when we're trying to go to sleep or in our dreams. I think we forget that God is constantly trying to communicate with his children. And if you have put your faith in Jesus, then you can be confident and assured that God loves you and wants to communicate with you. He's not trying to seem like a distant God. I know there are times where he feels distant, but he is constantly trying to speak to you. And the thoughts that God has for you, by the way, are more than you could even imagine. They're higher and greater than you can even fathom for yourself, that you could even dream for yourself. And so when we think about God's word, I want us to consider that this is an honor. This is the highest privilege, one of the highest, if not the highest privilege, that we could have the words of the Father written down for us to access any time we want. You know, if I need access to you, if I need access to my wife to communicate, I got to call. I got to hopefully, you know, I got to hope that she's awake because right now she's she's nursing and taking care of our son uh, most of the days and every day and all day. And so I got to hope that she's awake and um, she's got her phone on loud, right? Or maybe that she's at least looking at her phone. And so if I want access to my wife through communication, I've got to wait for all of these things to line up. I've got to wait for um, all of these things to come into play so that she actually picks up the phone when she sees me calling, first of all, wants to talk to me. <laughs> and then when she sees me calling, she picks it up and we get to talk. And hopefully the signal works, right? Again, if I'm not home, hopefully the signal works and there's nothing going on with the satellites. There's nothing going on where I'm in an elevator or she, so I don't know, will some point be in an elevator. You're going through a tunnel. Hopefully the signal works, right? And there's all these things that have to line up just for you to have access to the person that you're trying to talk to. But with God, you put your faith in Jesus and he tears the curtain, the veil in two. The curtain that separated us from his most holy presence. He tears it in two. So that you can have direct access to God through the sacrifice and breaking of Jesus' body. And it's this privilege that we get to also partake in when we read His Word. That we can access His words anytime that we want. Especially if you have something that you're watching this on, and you, which means you have internet, you have a device that can connect to the internet. You have access to the words of God. You have access to the Bible. And I want to encourage you to consider how much of a privilege it is for us to have this direct, consistent, guaranteed access to the Father. And so with that in mind, let's read Numbers chapter 6 in the NIV. Hopefully I'm standing in the right spot. Ah, all right. Numbers chapter 6, uh, verses 24 down to 27. It says this in the NIV. The Lord bless you. We just sang this. If you missed it, we sang the blessing by Carrie Job. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. 
So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. For context, the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Let's pray again. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that your Holy Spirit is here. We're so grateful that you, Holy Spirit, are working on the inside. A lot of times in ways that we can't see. What we're asking for, Lord, is for the faith to receive. The faith to believe in you. To trust in you. To put our hope in you. To put our joy in you. We need faith for that, God. Because without the faith that comes from you, it's also impossible to please you. And so we're asking through your Holy Spirit to stir up faith in us, to create faith in us, to give us faith even as small as a mustard seed, Lord God, so we can believe and trust in you for these grand things that you want to do in our lives. Lord, I'm praying that this word comes alive to us today and that we can honor you with the way that we live this out. In Jesus' mighty name, and again, everybody said amen. You're going to be saying amen a lot tonight because I'm going to ask you to. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But hopefully you say amen because you're saying I agree or so be it, which is what it means. So when you say amen, you're saying so be it. Let it be, God. May it be so. Um, so say amen when you agree. So Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 26. Again, this is what's called the priestly blessing. And it's something that God wanted to um, have Aaron uh, bless the Israelites with. Aaron and his sons to bless the Israelites with. And what I thought was peculiar is that the Lord, and I'll show it again to you here, is that the Lord highlighted his face twice. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. You see, a lot of times, and I'll get real with you for a sec here, as I'm always trying to be, by the way. I'm not trying to be fake, but a lot of times we want the, the approval of our father, the approval of our earthly father. Not, you know, let's, let's set aside the Heavenly Father for a second. We'll come back to Him. We want the approval of our earthly father, don't we? I think a lot of us, if, we're, if we grew up with a dad, and especially if you, grew up, if you grew up without a dad, you seek that approval of your Heavenly Father, of your earthly father, rather. And rather, not just the earthly father, but your earthly mother. You seek their approval. You came from them, and there's this deep connection that you cannot explain, you can't account for, other than there is this void that is naturally inside of you that seeks the approval of your parents. Again, in this case, your father. And I'm wondering if anybody's ever gone through that in their lives, because, look, I have. And sometimes I, I still want the approval of my father, because when your parents, your father approves of you, it means there's peace in your relationship. It means that between you and him, between you and your parents, whoever you grew up with, there's peace between you two. There's love. There's an understanding. There was a relationship there. And what is one of the clearest ways that you can show approval to somebody? I know I had to work on this. Because I'm a person who, if I'm feeling some type of way, if I'm feeling upset or frustrated, um, whether it's with a situation or with an individual, a lot of times people will know it, and the people that know me, a lot of times people will know it because I just don't talk. Or I just don't look at you. Because when you look to someone, when you turn your face to someone, there's a focus there. There's a connection there. There's an intimacy there. 
that when I was upset, at least definitely before, more so before, that when I was upset and when I was frustrated, I would remove that from people. I would remove that from almost everybody if I was frustrated at just any situation because my emotions got the best of me. I, I would allow my emotions to drive my decisions, to drive my thoughts. And so I would remove that approval, that intimacy, that focus from people to show that I was upset, to show that I was frustrated. And so it is with a father and their child. And I'll speak for my son and I. My son does not have to do anything for me to turn my face toward him. Because I want to show him that my eyes are on him, that I already approve of him. I'm already proud of him before he's ever done anything in this life. Just by existing, I'm proud of him. I love him. I look forward to what he's going to do next. Even if it is sometimes, you know, to, to, to shoot a stream of pee in my face, I love him. And one of the ways that I show it is by turning my face toward him. To look at the details on his cheeks. To look at the details of his hair. To listen to the sound of his voice, even if it's crying. To see what he's doing with his hands. To, to put my hands on his face to touch him. I love him so much. I cannot, at times, take my face away from him. And a lot of times, we long for that kind of approval and love and intimacy with our Father on earth. And we don't get it sometimes. And some of us, we do. We're privileged enough and blessed enough to get it. But whatever your experience is with your earthly father, this is what your heavenly Father wants you to know today. That He wants to bless you by turning His face toward you. And what does turning His face toward you mean? He wants to turn his face toward you to show you his grace, to show you his love, to show you his approval that he's not mad at you and that you have peace and intimacy, a relationship with him. That's what your heavenly father wants to show you today. And the best way for us to know what it is, the best way for us to know how to get the approval, the face of the Lord to turn toward us. The best way for us to feel confident that the face of the Lord is toward us is to go to the scripture and again read in the new covenant what has been revealed and already kind of teased in the old covenant. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul, 4, Paul writes, For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants, for Jesus' sake. Verse 6. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. If you want to know that God approves of you, if you want to know that you can have intimacy and relationship with your Heavenly Father, if you want to know that your Father is not mad at you, all you have to do is look at the face of Christ. Because it's the face of Christ that illuminates us to the fact that God is gracious to you. That God has provided a way for peace with Him. That God has provided a way for approval and it's through Jesus. The only way that you get to this kind of relationship with our Heavenly Father is through Jesus. Looking to Jesus' face. Seeking Jesus' face. Because it's through Jesus that we have access to the Father. What did I say earlier? It's through Jesus that the veil that, that kept us from seeing God, from meeting with God, from encountering God and getting into His presence, that veil has been removed when Jesus sacrificed His own life. When Jesus broke, when Jesus' body was broken on the cross for us, His blood was shed on the cross for us, He allowed us to enter the most holy of holies, the most holy place, so that we could be in God's presence. 
so that we can have a relationship with the Father. I want you to understand, especially if you don't put, if you don't believe in Jesus, if you haven't put your faith in Jesus, this is what is afforded you. The approval of your Heavenly Father. Confidence. The utmost confidence that your Heavenly Father approves of you comes when you put your faith in Jesus. You don't have to second guess. You don't have to doubt if God loves you. You don't have to doubt if God is pleased with you. When you put your faith in Jesus, you are certain that God is pleased with you, that He turns His face towards you, that He is gracious towards you, that He does love you, that He has peace that He wants to give you, that He has joy that He wants to give you. And this is the significance of God turning His face toward you. This blessing that was pronounced or declared over Israel would find its fulfillment in Jesus. In a way, it was something that that would give them a perspective of seeking the Lord's face. It would give them a perspective on what it means to seek the Lord's face. It means to seek His approval, to seek His pleasure. And you still want to seek God's approval and God's pleasure for God to be pleased with you. But the surefire way to start with the pleasure of God, to start with the approval of God, is to put your faith in Jesus. And from that, you operate from a place of approval, not because you want to be approved of. You operate from a place of being already accepted by your Father, not you do good things so that your Father accepts you. When you put your faith in Jesus, you operate from a place of already being loved, not so that you can be loved by God. And this is what comes when you put your faith in Jesus because He turns His face towards you through faith in Jesus. And I want to encourage you to make a decision to seek the Lord's face today because without seeking the Lord's face, you don't have the approval from God. You don't have the peace of God. See, a king, if he doesn't want to address you, he doesn't even look at you. To look at you is to acknowledge you. To look at you is to approve of you and say, and allowing you to come close. See, our King Jesus, he turns his face toward us and he shines the light of God's glory in our hearts. And God wants to make it known that he wants to be intimate with you. He wants to be close. He doesn't want for you to be far from Him. He wants you to be close to Him and to see clearly when you look at Him, you will see His face looking at you to show you that He loves you and He's pleased with you. I think that's probably one of the biggest issues that is plaguing us today, especially with our younger generation, myself included. I might not be the youngest here, but look, myself included, it's an issue because we're constantly seeking people's approval. We're constantly seeking the approval of people on the internet. We're constantly seeking the, for, free, for people to be pleased with us on the internet and what we post and how we look and the talents that we can provide, the way that we can make people laugh, the things that we can do for other people. We're constantly bombarded with this desire and this push to seek other people's approvals. Because that's what the like button is, right? You approve. You agree. You like me. And the Father wants you to know you don't have to operate with that kind of motivation in mind anymore. You don't have to operate from a place of low and sometimes non-exist non-existent self-esteem because your esteem really doesn't even come from yourself. It comes from what God says about you. And if you can capture what God says about you and thinks about you, how He loves you and is a, a, pleased with you and approves of you, then your self-esteem will rise in a way that you can even imagine. I'm glad that you get to um, hear this word today because I needed to hear it. I needed to know that no matter what, no matter what I do, I can't do enough good 
to get God's approval based on my goodness. And no matter how much bad I do, I can't do enough bad to gain God's disapproval when I put my faith in Jesus. It sounds radical. You might not agree with it. But I believe that's what Scripture reveals. And this is the kind of faith that we need if we're really going to start running and walking and operating in the love that God has for us. is to start actually believing what the Scripture says. That He has given us His approval in the face of Christ. That He's given us His glory in the face of Christ. That we have crossed over from death to life when you put your faith in Jesus. That you have been reconciled with God through Jesus. And I'm wondering if anybody needs to repent today because you have convinced yourself by the world's standards that because I'm not what the world thinks I should be, that God also doesn't like me. That God also doesn't approve of me. That somehow I'm not loved by God. You need to repent. Turn to the scripture. Turn to the truth of the word of God once again. So that you don't allow the world's influence to change how you see God and how you think God sees you. All you have to do is look at Jesus to know what God thinks of you. All you have to do is look to Jesus to know what God would say to you. Because Jesus is God. I want to pray for you tonight um, and give you the opportunity as well to make this decision either to turn to Jesus for the first time and seek his approval, to seek his face, or to repent from how, how much you've taken it for granted that Jesus approves of you before you ever did anything right. That when you put your faith in him, that was the only thing you needed to do to get his approval. That was the only thing that would qualify you for his peace. Again, not your works, not your consistency, not your accomplishments, but your faith in him and his grace towards you. If you need to repent from that lazy, lazy faith in the sense that you don't want to do work to actually believe. Sometimes that's what we think we're doing when we're working so hard to get God's approval as we're working. No, but it's actually more lazy in your faith because you're only trusting in what you know, which is yourself. You're only trusting in your own deeds. And so it's lazy faith because you're not really putting your faith in anything at all except yourself, which what you already know. So it takes faith, it takes a challenge to your faith to actually believe this about Jesus, to actually believe this about God. That he approves of you when you put your faith in Jesus. And then to operate in that approval. If you need this, I want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you that you've given um, me and every single person um, on this video an opportunity to turn to you once again. God, we need you. We know that we can't even understand the scripture without you. And we're asking that you help us to navigate these convictions that you're giving us these thoughts and emotions that you're allowing us to experience. Give us grace, God, to make a decision of faith. Empower us, embolden us, help us to make a decision of faith in Jesus, your Son, so that when we do, we can be confident in your approval. We can be confident in the peace that you give us through that faith in Jesus, your Son. I pray, Lord, for anybody that has yet to make that decision that you help them Lord you surround them with godly people you surround them with godly influence and I pray Lord for all those who need to repent um, including myself Lord God from a lazy faith that only trusts in ourselves and what we know help us God challenge us from the inside out Holy Spirit to give up the things that we think we know to give up even the experience that we have for the sake of going on this journey of trusting in you and following you where you lead us. So that when we operate and move in this world, we operate from a place of already approved, of already loved, of already given peace, of already being 
intimate with you, of already being in love with you and loved by you. And Lord, thank you so much that you want us to draw near. Thank you that you don't want us to stay far. You want us to draw near to you, to become even more intimate with you. Thank you, Lord, that you've torn the very things that have separated us from you, mainly sin and the power of sin, the grip of sin and the consequence of sin. You've dealt with it so that we can be close to you. So thank you, Lord. And we do repent, Lord God. We choose this day to come to you with confidence. We choose this day to come to you with boldness because you love us, to trust that you approve of us, to trust that you desire us to come near to you. Give us faith to believe that, Lord, so that we would stop walking around like the insecure creatures that we tend to be. In Jesus' name, amen.